Okay, today we're going to be looking at how we can create a level select screen similar to what Candy Crush has. So we have this level select with this wandering path. It goes down, 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 and then it links up to the next level. Down, down, down. And then you can add as many of these panels on here as you like so that we have this kind of scrolling level select. So let's uh, jump right in. Okay, welcome back everybody. I know it's been over a week since I did one of these. I just, stuff is busy this time of year, I'm sorry. Uh, we're very much at that time of the school year where I have a, a countdown for how many days are left. So uh, hopefully things will settle down maybe a little bit and then in the summer I will definitely be able to, to hit a, a regular schedule. So, all right, so we're making our level select scene today. To start us out here, I'm going to create a new scene, and I'm going to have the buttons be their own scene because I want them to know if they should be active or not, and if they should be active, which texture to have. I also want them to control uh, whether or not the star is active or not, and we're just going to use one star. You could use three. I'm just going to use the one star uh, to say whether or not the high score has been met. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a no 2D as its base, even though we're using a button, I want it to be a node 2D because I want to be able to easily place it in space. Um, as a child of this node 2D, I'm going to add a uh, texture button. Now on the uh, itch.io file for all the art, I've updated it to have a new section inside the UI for level select assets. And mine, I didn't actually add it as a section. Um, so you should be able to see that. So what I have here is um, a couple different level select maps. We're going to use the one that goes top down because of a, an issue that I haven't quite found a solution to. So my solution is just to do top down. So I have one that goes top down and I have one that just continues. So you can have it continuing infinitely the way that Candy Crush does. And then this will be like the beginning here. I also have a few different versions of the button. I have this kind of dark green one. It's kind of light green one. I couldn't decide which I liked more between the greens. I think I like this one better than that one because it fits the red more. Uh, I have a red button. I have a star blank, and then I have a star filled. So for my texture button here, I'm going to open up the textures for my normal. I'm going to have that be a red button. And I'm going to place this so that it's right where the node 2D is. Right now it's kind of offset from the node 2D. So I'm just going to pull this over and up. And then that means I'm going to need to take a look at the margins here. So margin, negative 48. Um, yeah, that's actually just fine because it ended up being 97 by 97. So this negative 48, 49 stuff, that's was by design, believe it or not. Uh, OK, and then as another child, I'm going to add a sprite. And I'm actually, let's not do, yeah, well, oh, I can't decide now if I want a sprite or if I want it to be an image. We'll do sprite. And I'm going to have this be the star blank. So I'll just put that right in there. I'm going to put this down kind of right there about. Let's take a look at its transform. I want it to be zero. And then let's make this a nice neat number. Let's say 72. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, and now on my texture button, I'm going to create a new child node, and this is going to be a label for what level it is. And the button's going to control what level it is on its own. I'm going to put this here, make it nice and big. And I already have fonts, I believe, in here because we, yeah, we already did stuff with fonts. So I'm just going to kind of mess around with the margins a little bit here. Uh, and then I always like to go back and make them a little more precise. So my left margin is 16. Um, let's make this 78. It's a little bit better. And bottom I'm going to make 72. And the top I'm going to make 12. Okay, that's not too bad. I'm going to uh, go to the custom fonts section here. And I'm going to create a new font. Now, I could just 
I've kept the old font, but I don't mind creating a new font every time. New dynamic font. I'm going to click on that. Click on font. And I'm going to load some font data. And I just like the Kenny blocks. Uh, I think it looks really cool. There's a few others on here that are pretty good, but I'm just going to use the Kenny blocks. And for my settings, I'm going to set, let's try 20. And then on my label itself, let's set the text to be just 1. Okay, cool. 20 is clearly not enough. I also need to align this center in both directions. All right, and now let's go back to our custom fonts. Let's go maybe 50. It's a little bit too big. So let's jump back to like 4. No, 50 was good. The only problem with having it at 50 is if you have multiple levels, you want to make sure that everything works the way it's supposed to. So we're just going to have it be at 1 right now, and that'll be fine. So we've got our button. We've got whether or not we met the star goal, and then we've got the level number. Now, I'm going to change the name of the scene to be level button. And I'm going to eventually, next time, we're going to create a script here to have this control what number it is and uh, whether it's locked or unlocked and whether this uh, sprite here should be filled or unfilled. But for now, I'm just going to save this into my scenes folder. So save scene, scenes level button, save. Now I'm going to make another here, and this is going to be for one of my backgrounds. And I'm going to add to this a texture rect. And I'm going to call this uh, level backdrop. All right, and then for my texture for this, I'm going to use my first one. So I'm going to grab my level select map. I'm just going to pop it right there. And I'm going to set my text or my layout to be full rect. And now, as a child node here, I'm going to add some of those buttons. So scenes, level button. And then if I zoom in, I want my level button to be, so like this is going to be level one. I'm going to duplicate it. This would be level two. Duplicate it. This would be level three. Duplicated, and it, I mean it doesn't say levels one, two, or three right now, but that's because I'm going to add that script logic to it, and then you can just kind of follow this path like that. Okay, now I'm just going to do a few levels just to start. So there's my level backdrop. I'm going to save this scene as level backdrop. I'm going to save. I'm going to make a new inherited scene, which is going to inherit from level backdrop. And this one I'm going to call level 2 backdrop. And for this one, I'm going to change the texture to be this level select panel. I'm going to change the placement of the buttons here. So I'll put you there, put you over here, you here. Oops, did not mean to do that. There we go. You go here, and we'll put you over here. All right, cool. So we've got our two levels. We got level and then level two, and I'm going to save this. Save scene. Level two backdrop, save. All right, so I've got three little helper scenes here. The button, the first level backdrop, and the second level backdrop. Now I'm going to make a level select scene itself. So. I'm going to make a new scene, and this is going to have a control. Actually, we'll do canvas layer as its base scene. As a child of here, I'm going to make a scroll container. And scroll containers can scroll horizontally or vertically. Now, I'm going to resize this manually, but I'll come back and change it in just a second by hand. But I want this to take up the whole screen. Now, for my scroll over here in the inspector, I don't want it to scroll horizontally. I do want it to scroll vertically. Uh, I'm also going to go to the margins and change these to be right. So this should be 576. And bottom should be 1024. Oops. Sorry. 576. 
and you are 1024. All right, cool. Now, when I added the scroll container, you can see this yellow come up because it's a scroll container is intended to work with a single control child. So you should only have one child of a scroll container. That child could be a margin container, a um, HBox container, a VBox container. It just has to have one child because it's meant to have that child go outside of it and then it scrolls to make that fit. So I'm going to add a child and the child I'm going to add is going to be a VBox container because I'm going to hold these levels vertically. And then in my VBox container, I'm going to uh, instance my level one backdrop. And oops, from my VBox container, I'm going to instance my level two backdrop. Now you can see right away that you can't see it, but they're on here. Now, I want to go to my VBox container, custom constants, and I want to make sure that my separation is set to zero. So I'm going to turn that on. All right, I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this my level select scene. And I'm going to play just this scene just so you can see how it works. So here we go. Going down, 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 down. I should have taken that into account, that weird bump. But we have almost a perfect separation between these two. Now, if I wanted to, I could have made this one have a top that was that dark green. And then it could have gone to blue and then you can make this kind of continuous look, but here we go. We have a, uh, a level select scene that looks very similar to what you'd see in Candy Crush. It doesn't do anything yet, because we're going to have to add that functionality to our buttons, but the level select scene itself looks not too bad. Now, we could add like a, a back button up here. That actually wouldn't be too bad of an idea, um, so that we can always go back to the main menu. And the other thing that we can do is we can make our main menu load into here instead of loading into any one specific scene. So our main menu can load here, we can go from here back to the main menu, and then we can also go from here to any of the levels. So um, we're going to be talking about this more in just a couple days. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to script the buttons so that they work. And then once we have that done, uh, we're going to do a few more juicy effects, and then we're going to be taking a look at the um, saving data so that we can save our players progress we can know what levels they've cleared what levels they haven't and so on so if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments down below um, you can follow me on twitter find out when i post new videos you can join my discord where there's tons of really good people talking and sharing what they've been doing and yeah i hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day if you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.